Hello, gems. Welcome to the VTuber Voices podcast. On this podcast, we talk about what it's like to be virtual, as well as business tips and being a creative in the content creation industry. This is going to be season four. We'll be interviewing the lovely Spats. Spats has been working in animation professionally as both an animator and a designer. She's worked on shows like My Little Pony, Mr. Peabody and Sherman Show, and The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, along with many more more, but we will be learning about her journey as a VTuber and switching from working in a studio to being a full-time freelance creative art streamer. So she has tons of valuable industry experience, super duper excited to hear from Spats. In this episode specifically, we'll be talking about what it's like to switch from a studio working to full-time. We brush up a little bit on that in this episode and we'll go more into it later and what it's like to learn live 2D and just learning a little bit of where Spats has come from as far as her journey goes so far. Let's hop into it. Spats, why don't you introduce yourself to everybody? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, um, I'm Spats. I'm a animator, live 2D model maker, a character designer, um, and full-time uh, creative streamer now. Cool. So actually hopping right into that sort of thought process about being a full-time creative streamer now. So uh, what made you make the decision to go from doing studio work uh, to doing freelance slash more like working for yourself? Um, well, we all know the last year, you know, around April, maybe, um, you know, the pandemic hit. Um, so everybody started working from home. Um, and at that point I was still full time. I was full time for the past five years or so yeah. uh, working in the animation industry. Uh, I was layout artist, key layout artist and a uh, character designer and animator here and there, like all the, all the similar, you know, similar kind of roles. Um, mm-hmm. so I started working from home, um, and it, you know, the pandemic months passed, you know, um, in September, October came around and I was going to maybe have a little bit, I wanted a little bit of a break from mm-hmm. my contract work. Um, so I just let my bosses know prior that, Hey, cause I usually would just take contract after contract after contract. Cause I was like working full time. Yeah. Um, but I was streaming a little bit more just on my own and doing commissions and stuff. So I was like, I'm going to try and see if I can make this work. Um, so in October, kind of, I wasn't, I don't think I was full full time, but I started just gearing up towards just streaming more yeah and taking on more freelance commissions and um uh january came so i was you know and it was it was pretty it was pretty good i have my community is very supportive yeah uh, so i just uh kept doing commissions freelance i i still have a working relationship with my old studio mm-hmm. um, i'm just not on a full-time capacity they'll just message me if they need help with anything but yeah Uh, Yeah, I was doing like character design, I think, for the last several months or the last four or five months of my uh, like the the career I was at before, um, which was a lot more laid back, um, I will say, than animating. (laughs) Um, But it was also a little boring because it's like you have to draw on the design of the show that you're working in and stuff. And I wanted to draw my own stuff. So it was like, okay, let's switch to, let's try this out. And um, January came and I took January to learn live 2D. Yeah. Um, So that's when, uh, because before the, before I used this, this model, I had a 3D model um, that I still use. Um, I just use it in VR chat for my uh, RP stuff. So um, I switched to live 2D. I learned to rig and then kind of from there it exploded like for, um, like streaming full time and I just grew really quickly a little bit not grew but like more eyes were on me as soon as soon as kind of I got this 2d model yeah um so I I just kept doing it in open commissions and now I'm basically a vtuber parent <laughs> a vtuber now. parent I'm, yes I'm focusing on making vtuber models for the foreseeable future for until you know I can work on other commissions and stuff but so far so good yeah did you so did you how did you end up going about learning live 2d did you just like buckle down and do a course or like how did it go well um there are it's i wouldn't say courses there are tutorials Mm -hmm. um uh iron vertex is a big uh a big uh well known they do a lot of vtuber rigging um for bigger vtubers and stuff that can afford their (laughs) services yeah so they kind of exploded in the popularity so they have a 
Uh, they have a website that links to YouTube tutorials. I just, what I did is I looked up tutorials. Um, I joined, there's a Discord server for the Live 2D community. You, all you have to do is search Live 2D Cubism. Um, Discord community, it's, you know, it's there. Um, I didn't use much from there. I just was Googling and bookmarking whatever tutorial I could. And I, I always link like um, the tutorials I have used. And there's one specific tutorial uh, tutorial series that I watched, which is a Iron Vertex uh, member. Um, it's in Chinese, but their uh, videos are in, they're subtitled in English with yeah. with proper um, translation. So it was really easy to follow, and that's mainly the only tutorial I used to learn how to rig. And then it was just a matter of you know taking the time to rewatch the tutorial again and like reinforce it, it. Five or ten times. Yeah, yeah. Reinforce it and like work along and um the live 2d program itself it does cost quite a bit of money mm -hmm. um but there's a 40 odd day free trial so um you get the full program you can make your whole model in 40 days and i did that i made it in like 20. yeah like i just worked on my model full time for like two weeks and i managed to come up with something i've been adding on to my own model um but like if you don't if you want to make your own model you don't have to and you have the skills or you want to learn the skills um you don't have to uh pay someone you there you could be a png tuber you know vtubing is as expensive as you want it to be yeah so um and if you want the quality of like a professional of course you can commission someone but if you're a creative yourself and you draw yourself um you can make your own model like, yeah you, you can learn and rig it um, I, I would, I will say that I picked it up pretty quickly. Um, I don't think it was, I, I, I like to think maybe it was because of my background, but I like, think it was absolutely, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't a rigger. I wasn't a rigger, but I did work gotcha. with things mm -hmm. that uh, like in school, Toon Boon Harmony is another animation program that a lot of shows, um, use. Yeah. So that have like deformers and stuff yeah um but i i think i just picked it up pretty quick i don't know yeah i don't know why because everyone's like i want to because like this was my first model my own model was my first model um and some people find that hard to believe but it was yeah so and i did stream my whole process so i pretty much streamed all my process with how i learned it yeah so. yeah no and i totally believe that because i mean like, I don't know, animating and such, even though you didn't know rigging because of your background in animation, mm -hmm. you know how to rig something to look super accurate or to look like yeah. have that extra like aesthetic look. The liveliness of like, I open my eyes and my yeah. people stylate and stuff like that. So. Exactly. And one of my favorite like even little animations you've done is the one of your character jumping up and down. I love that yeah. so much. <laughs> I could stare yeah, at it forever. <laughs> Well, she she jump in forever, so yeah. Yeah, it's an infinite loop. <laughs> That's right. Cool. So, what got you into VTubing? What made you take this whole direction in general over doing something like face cam or anything else? Well, so I got my 3D model. So I've been playing VR chat since 2018, mm -hmm. and uh, I started streaming. Um, pretty close after VR chat, just, you know, for fun, doing commissions for friends and stuff like that. Um, and I wasn't full time by any means. It was just whenever I felt like it. Um, I didn't have a VTuber model. I think it was near the end of, was it last year? I think the, the begin, the near the end of 20, 2020 or 2019, sorry, near the end of 2019, I commissioned my friend Lyra, Lyra121 on Twitch. Um, she does VTuber model making, but she makes 3D models. Um, and she made, she was like a pretty wide known VR chat model maker. Um, so I commissioned her to make my character for just VR chat. And then I was able to use that model. Uh, she set up for me as a VRM. Like this was, this was like in 20, like early 2020 kind of thing mm -hmm. is when I think I started using. I'm pretty sure it's 20. I, you know, the years have gone. They just blur. <laughs> I'm like, what is time? Yeah, I think it was 2020 is when I was using the 3D model. Um, so I, I, I didn't have a face cam because I don't like, I don't like my face. 
Um, I think most of us don't like our own faces. We all, you know, I just didn't want to have my face on camera. Um, I was just, you know, just art streamer. I just had my art on stream. Um, but since I paid for this model and there was these programs, it was like, yeah, I can have a cute little model on the screen. So that's how I became a VTuber. Yeah. But I wasn't, I wasn't advertising myself really as a VTuber until like, late uh, later on in the year beginning of like yeah like later on in the year so yeah and i think it was a big like vtubing is just such a huge step for so many people who have like a channel mascot or and again for artists mm -hmm. it's been so big for artists because we can find new ways to express ourselves in like the visual aesthetic that we want to and i i love your character design by the way she's absolutely Thanks. beautiful <laughs> Thanks. heck yeah so do you have any lore or backstory for your character? No. <laughs> uh, I just, my backstory is everyone was complaining about cat girls or like that people were like unoriginal cat girl, blah, blah, blah. And I was yeah. like, like, nah, I'm, I'm going to make a cat girl. Yeah. Um, just to spite people. Yes, but, let's go. Um, so, and I was like, I want hearts. I like hearts. Let's make a heart theme. So I just added a bunch of hearts. Like, yes. You know, heart, like, gauge in her ear, earring, a little heart mole, heart, heart motive thing. Um, her hair isn't really heart. Like, oh, her heart bangs thing. like right there. Like, the bangs. Yeah. Are, like, you know. Ooh, so, subtle character design. A. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and uh, and then I just pick colors I liked. So uh, that's her lore. I put like on my Twitch like I, and I'm a, I worked on so many cartoons I became one myself. But I just did that for the partner application, honestly. <laughs> I was like, do you sound like something different? So. Oh my um, goodness. Yes. Yeah, so uh, she doesn't really have lore. I do role play um, every Friday in Kalos Row. Um, it's like a big LARP in VR um, that I have like backstory for her. Yeah. It's, it's like an AU thing. It's like separate from my yeah. identity. Like her character is separate. Um, it's, she's just the same looking character. So yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's basically like I made her and then Lyra's like, oh, hey, I'm a part of this role play. She looks like she could belong in this role play. And I was talking to Lyra. I was like, I want to I wanna try VRP because like, I used to LARP. Yeah. Um, and I like uh, D&D and stuff. So I was able to uh, get in uh, Calistrone season one. So yes, where she came from. That's awesome. And I do, I do like the idea, too, of having those things separate, because we've talked a lot about like on the channel and in the podcast about, you know, setting boundaries between your content or like your character yourself. And I actually think that was a good idea that you separated them a bit. Um, so you're not like trying to play up the lore, like while well, working on commissions. Well, I think like what you did works really well for you. Yeah, like a lot of a lot of VTubers have like they're playing a character. Yeah, um, not every VTuber, obviously, like there's going to be aspects of themselves in the character they play, but I'm not playing a character. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't I don't have like a uh, immersion, I would say, uh, like where I'm like, oh, I'm at, like sometimes I'll crack a joke here and there about being a cat girl. But yeah. um, I'm not like, you know, it's just tongue in cheek kind of thing more than anything. Yeah. Um, and I feel like because I'm mainly a creative streamer, I play games here and there, but um, I'm more of like, I want to teach people or show them my, my workflow or yeah. answer questions that they have while I'm working. Cause um, as much as Twitch is very, um, it's, it also pays me, but I'm, I, my more, most of my income comes from commissions. Like that's my main, com like, I have to make sure I have enough commissions to pay, you know, the, yeah. the bills and stuff. So the Twitch side is very fluctuating. Yeah. So commissions are the one that I focus on. So, you know, I kind of have to, I don't really have a character to play when i'm streaming it's yeah just me focused on work so yeah and i and i like too that you have the whole you know multiple sources of income from commissions and twitch because even being mm. like any type of creative freelancer you have to have the right mindset because you could drive yourself insane with it feeling like it's unsustainable because you don't know exactly what like each check is going to be yeah and i like i took the opportunity like a lot of I have a lot of friends that and people I know or people that I even don't know that, you know, are struggling during a pandemic. And I feel like this, I haven't felt that as much. I felt like not leaving my apartment in a year and not ha ha like hugging a friend in over a year, <laughs> yeah. having any human contact in over a year. But it hasn't, it's, 
it's helped me too it's also like the pandemic as much as it sucks it's shown me what i want where i want to go and i wanted to move back home closer to my family yeah that was the main one of the main reasons why i was like i'm gonna try and make this work and i have so many people supporting me yeah um, be it viewers be it people that commission me my friends that i was like i i can make this work i can make freelancing and streaming work and um the benefit of being i would say a vtuber that creates other vtubers is i'm always growing like yeah. i'm always getting new eyes on me because i'm making uh, other vtuber models exactly um, and you know it, it's growing my portfolio i would say so yeah. i'm still learning i'm nowhere near an expert but uh with every model i make i learn new techniques and stuff so um i'm hoping it keeps it keeps going we'll yeah. see how it is but yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So a question from uh, Star. Star says, should you have a certain amount of skill in art before deciding to become an art streamer? Or should you just start regardless of current skill level? I think you can start at any skill level because um, what you would bring to the table as a brand new person that doesn't know how to draw is your 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 um like starting from nothing and you know, you're showing yeah. your your progress kind of thing. You know, you because then you could look down the line of Look what I started with and look where I'm where I am now at any point, right? Yeah. Um, so I would say if you wanna become like don't get discouraged. Like obviously if you're just starting and you're still learning, you shouldn't be comparing yourself to someone that's been drawing for over ten years or even someone's been drawing for a year. Like yeah. you should not be comparing yourself because that's just gonna bring you disappointment. Um, you will always get disappointed if you're comparing yourself. So you have to kind of focus on your journey and your goals and you shouldn't put, you shouldn't put a timeline on learning yes. because it's different for everybody. Yes. Yep. Everybody learns at different rates. So even if you've been doing art for a year and somebody else has been, been doing art for a year, you could still be from completely different areas of skill level. Exactly. Exactly. And that's fine. That's totally fine. Like some people pick it up faster, easier, whatever, because we're all different. Everyone is different. But you're going to bring something to the table that someone else might not bring. Yeah. So. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that struggle with thinking like they don't have anything unique to offer. But everybody's experiences are so crafted individually that you always have something to offer, especially when it comes to creativity, because you view the world differently than anybody else does. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. A huge thank you so far to Spats. It's been lovely to have her on. We'll be continuing our interview with Spats on the next episode. But thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you on episode two, season four. Have a lovely day, Gems. Bye.